He is risen. Thank you to our Trinity Choir reminding us of the resurrection of Christ. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, introducing our speaker, uh, it says, Today we warmly welcome Pastor Sung Kuk Shin. Pastor Shin is pastor of New Life Korean Church. It meets here every Sunday at 1 p.m. I don't know if you knew that, but every afternoon, 1 p.m., their service starts here in this sanctuary, and we have greatly uh, rejoiced in a partnership with them through the years. Uh, he has uh, traveled to many nations for missions work, including Vietnam, Dominican Republic, India, and Senegal. I added one in there, and so we're glad to have him. Uh, glad for your friendship, your partnership in the gospel, and glad for the ministry of the word as you share God's word with us today. Thank you, Pastor Shin. Good morning. Good to see you, everyone. It's, it's a great honor to standing here, having me as the last speaker of 48th Mission Month Sunday service. Really appreciate to Pastor Doug, thank you for having him, Pastor Sean. And Korean cultures, we have to name every pastor. So Pastor Sam, thank you so much. <laughs> pastor Skip, thank you so much. And Pastor Bob, thank you so much. <laughs> so many pastors, thank you so much. And it is great honor and to have a mission month for whole month. It's not an easy thing to do it. It's not many churches doing, not having a mission mindset. But this New Life in Christ Church has a great heart, vision for reach out to the nations. And thank you for allowing have a Korean church together. And it's been more than 20 years that you're getting together as a partner. And I've been here as a New Life Korean Church pastor about seven years right now. When I joined the church, I found out you're serving a whole month for March as a mission month. And that makes me a goosebump because past 15 years, I've been doing the mission trip to Vietnam for more than uh, 10 years. And I always go to a march. So you could, we could just uh, say, ah, that's a coincidence. But for me, it was personal. God knows. And we're, why is it doing march for visiting Vietnam? It's because airfare is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, in the Vietnam, the Hmong tribe is in Bru tribe. They don't work at the farm at that, day, uh, at that month. So it's easy to have a fellowship. I don't know why the New Life in Christ Church has a March as a mission month. It might have a behind the story. I don't want to know, but. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. And since I'm the last speaker of the mission month, I'm obligated to claim, exclaim the Ready to rumble, right? This always has to do that. Aren't you glad you invited me as the last speaker of this meeting? <laughs> always want to do that, but, but I'm not a. I, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm just quiet. I'm just quiet. And also, one on, announcement is uh, I brought a Vietnam uh, coffee from Kesan. So who's coming the first time in the second service, you cannot taste the, the coffee. It's already gone. We prepared 50 co a cup of coffee, but it was gone in five minutes. So I didn't know it was that popular. So next year, when I visit Vietnam and coming back, I'll bring the whole bunch of them so you could drink a month for <laughs> Vietnam coming. So be with it. Are you ready to rumble for a God's fight? We are here as a Christian, as a believer, and work in the God's field. And God loves the mission-oriented heart. That's why we are here. And the today's scripture is talking about that. If you allow, today's scripture is 
uh, book of Acts 13, verses 46 through 49. I'll read it for you. Acts 13, 46 through 49. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first, since you rejected and do not consider yourself worthy of eternal life. We now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. I'll, speak, uh, I'll read it in Korean. 바울과 바나바가 담대히 말하여 이르되 하나님의 말씀을 마땅히 먼저 너희에게 전할 것이로 돼 너희가 그것을 버리고 영생을 얻기에 합당하지 않은 자로 자처하기로 우리가 이방인에게로 하행하노라 주께서 이같이 우리에게 명하시되 내가 너를 이방의 빛으로 삼아 너로 땅 끝까지 구원하게 하리라 하셨느니라니 이방인들이 듣고 기뻐하여 하나님의 말씀을 찬송하며 영생을 주시기로 작정된 자는 다 믿더라 주의 말씀이 그 지방에 두루 퍼지니라 아멘 During the service this might be the last Korean you could hear So I'll do it in English Shall I do both languages? Then? I'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take a while. But today's scripture, the background, uh, chapter X 13 is first mission trip for Barnabas and Paul uh, visiting the Pisidians Antioch. And he went, both of them went to the synagogue and preached the gospel. So his first uh, sermon is all written in chapter 13. Through verses 17 through 41. So when you go back home, if you're wondering what message was, just go home and read the scripture. But I could summarize it for you. The Paul boldly said the history of Israel indicating that Jesus Christ and God promised the Savior, who was Jesus Christ, is here and he died for us. And the call for repentance. And faith, those who believe in Jesus Christ, forgiven and justified. That was the whole summary of his sermon. Next day, not the next day, after the sermon, the people say, could you come over next week to give us a message? And they agree. So next Sabbath day, he went with Barnabas again to the synagogue and preached the word, but... At that time, the Jews were against it. They were slandering the the messages. They opposed the message one by one. That's why the chapter 46 of uh, 13, 46 is saying that we are done enough. You rejected the message. Now I'm heading and the Gentile country. That's why uh, as he quoted Isaiah 49, 6, you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. The earth could translate a different word to the land. So what's the land is? Land means the people are living there. When you go to the land, you could see the people are staying and living in that site. That's why God says, go to the ends of the earth. But Roman, Rome 10.14 says, And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? I say, if anyone goes out to preach the gospel, how could they hear and how could they believe? They have to hear it. Someone has to go to the land, to the ends of the earth. That's why Abram, I believe Abram was the first missionary, what God appointed. In Genesis 12, he says, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. The land I will show you. The land was not empty. The land was occupied by Canaanites. So Abraham's mission was, as a missionary, he has to go and show who God is. But he failed many times. But eventually, he did his work. So my question today is, where is the end of the earth? Where's your end of the land? Where you're carrying 
the message. If you ask me, where's your end of the earth? I could say, where the motorcycle stops. You might puzzle what motorcycle means. When I go to Vietnam, I rode a motorcycle, and wherever the driver goes, when it stops, that's the end of the land. And we go there and preach the gospel. During the past 12 years, <clears throat> when we visit the remote area and the motorcycle stops, it's a beautiful to work together with a local pastor. He make an opportunity that ask them, hey, we have a guest far, far away. So can we come in and share naturally the gospel? That's the end of the earth. Now, next year when we go there, there's a church was there, and then further and further it goes beyond where we visited. So next stop is the end of the earth for me. That's why I call where the motorcycle stops, that's the end of the earth for me. Where's the end of the earth for you? You might ask yourself. The New Life Korean Church, we pray early morning every week, and we pray for end of the earth. Monday, we pray for our local ministries in Fredericksburg area, Virginia area, and Tuesday, we pray for Vietnam, and Wednesday, we pray for Dominican Republic and Haitian churches over there. And Thursday, we pray for India, and Friday, we pray for Israel, and Saturday, we pray for Senegal and Philippines. It's so beautiful how to work together to bring the message to the end of the earth. I'm glad the New Life in Christ Church was helping and doing the partnership with New Life Korean Church to reach out to Vietnam, the highland people, the mountain people. If you don't have any information, come to next year. I'll give you a full report because on Sunday school, I already report everything, so I don't have anything to share with you at this time. <laughs> or or re, uh, watch the broadcasting, the stream. But it's amazing to work together, bring the message to unreached people. Secondly, the point is, the gentle, Gentiles honor the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed to eternal life believed. The appointed here, the Greek word tasso, is meaning set aside. It's a military term to arrange soldiers. So when God says appointed, that means there's a purpose. When the soldiers was recruited, he has to go to boot camp, get trained, and everything. After this uh, training, he got assigned to the specific place, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. He just goes and then assigned to the small platoon. Everyone has their duty and role to carry on. But to do that, they have to pro have a proper training. Appointed, don't forget, we all appointed, and God is looking for certain specific reason to carry his message. Every single soldier is important. Without that soldier, you cannot carry out the proper missions, what we planned. That's why God called us one by us, one by one today. Luke 15, 8, Jesus gave a parable for a woman who lost one silver coin. It was 10 silver coins, and 10 silver coins signifies it was a dowry for marriage, signifies, and it used as an ornament. So a woman was probably using it, but somehow the string broke out. The, the coins were scattered all, but she collected nine of them by missing one silver coin. And without one silver coin, without become a ten silver coin, it's not complete. So she was turning the lamp on because it's dark inside the house and then swooping to find out. That's God's heart. Each one of us, we've been through that process. When I went to Kazan, the Vietnam first time, I went to preach to the minor tribe leaders. And I thought I was really big shot guy. I didn't say ready to rumble at that time, but 
But when I see them, I became very humble. They are really wants to eager. But God showed me that this is my people. I appointed it. I saved it. I want to show it to you. This is like the same time what I experienced 12 years ago in Vietnam. God showing his people that I appointed them and I'm using them as a vessel. You know, during the worship hour is so precious. We've been through all the pandemic, right? 2020, when it started it, we couldn't get together. I didn't know what can the New Life Korean Church could sustain or exist. But when I look at the New Life Christ Church, it was almost the same thing. We all, less than 10 people has to get together because it was forceful. But because New Life in Christ just was there, we were, I was able to go through it. And our church could go through it because you were united together. We were all worked together. It's an amazing story when we look together. So as a woman looking for a silver coin, that's what God is working on it. And when God says, do you see this people? I appointed Jesus Christ died for that person, that soul. It just touched my heart and moved my heart. I'll show you some people God is eager to find to appoint one. One gentleman, when I went to Vietnam, is in the mountain area and preparing for the evening service. Uh, one girl came over and cried out, uh, could you come over to our place? My father is drunk and he's so violent. He doesn't want me to go to the evening service. So can you persuade my father? Because of the evening service, I have to do it. I said, after the service, I'll go there. So during the service, my mind is just keeping... Wow, what's going to happen after when I visit there? He's, he's a drunk. He's not a believer. He's a persecutor. So what can I do? But after the evening service, the girl came over. My father is in the church pastor's office. So I was a little scared of what's going to happen. But the drunk guy, he was red. You know the drunk people, right? The red and all the eyeball is moving around everywhere. It's scary. But he was crying out to, if God says, don't get drunk, I'll believe him. I don't know why he said that, but he said that. So he was relieved for me. Wow, God is amazing. You know, Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk. On wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Reminds me that verses. So I asked the local pastor, go find Ephesians 5.18 and give it to him. And the local pastor find it and gave it to 5.18. And when it spread out to him, he was sitting right there. And he kneeled down on the third floor and read carefully, word by word. So when I saw his kneeling down, that means his desire. He was looking for something. He was so thirsty for spiritual food. And we separated, and the next year we went there, the same place, and we saw, I saw him. He was so bright. He was so happy. He was a faithful servant. Still his serving Lord Jesus Christ in that church. God is amazing because God appointed him. He has, he has a, a he, God wants to use him as a vessel to use it. Isn't, aren't we glad that God appointed us and using me at this time in this world? Second brother is, went to other year for Kazan. That person was half the left arm was half gone. But he was singing a hymn and sweeping the courtyard, the churchyard. And then he's serving the tea with his only right hand. 
And I asked him, what happened? And he said, he was so violent guy, and he didn't believe until he lost his arm. His mother said, you have to believe Jesus Christ. That's the only way you could survive. But he said he denied it. And he, he got drunk. He played gamble. But one day, the gambling got ugly. So people got fighting each other. And one other guy grabbed the knife, you know, the jungle knife, cutting the banana leaves. It's really big. And he was shooting it and hitting with that person. And he tried to block the knife with his left arm. And left arm was cut off. And when his left arm was cut off, he realizes his mom was right. He has to believe Jesus Christ. And since he turned his heart to Jesus Christ, now, even though he has lost his one arm, he's peaceful. He was delighted to serve other people with one hand. Matthew 18, 8 is a truth. It is better for you to en- enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal life. This word is truth. God appointed it. He doesn't want to lose you. Even though you lose one arm, he's appointing you and to grab it from the eternal fire and third person is last month we went to Vietnam he's a gangster living nearby Lao borderline he's notorious to drug dealer and stealing other people's money and goods how skillful he was he could steal money even someone is sleeping and hiding money in the pillow he could steal it. That, he was really good at it. That's what I heard. But <clears throat> since he was doing really bad thing, even he still stole the police, policeman's house uh, chicken. So chick, the policeman wants to do something, but he just didn't have a proof. And he's really notorious, violent, so he doesn't want to deal with him. Because it was a bad act, that village was so bad. Even gospel cannot go through it because village was closed down. The foreigner never allowed to come in. But one of the leader, church leader, you will see after the clip, the video clip later on, the leader says, challenge to the gangster, you are in the dark right now. You have to come to the light. You have to believe Jesus Christ. First, when he heard the message, he didn't care. But inside, deep, deep inside, he, he knew it. He's going to die someday to get the punishment because of his bad acts. Finally, he decided, I want to be light. I want to get saved through Jesus Christ. He kneeled down and he became a changed man. When we visited him last month in that church, he's just gracefully serving us. And he regretted what he did, but now he wants to go on beyond what God is planning for him. He wants to take all the hardship what God allows to change the village. The reason we could visit there is because his conversion changed the village. The violent village changed the peaceful village. That's why policeman says, whoa, you changed because of gospel? Let us, the gospel messengers, come in. That's the reason we could go in there last month and share the gospel together. God is amazing. Once he got appointed, he wants to do it until the mission is done. Literally, the word of the Lord spread through the whole reason. How could the, the message could go through the reason? The reason is by appointing one like us. We carry the message 
to the end of the earth to show and God is already working in that region. I'll show you the video clip. It's about two minutes. It's a nearby small church, Brew Church in Lao area. You'll see a guy, you could see, show it. You could see the leaders is going to cry. He's, he shows the tears. Uh, not yet, not yet. I'm explaining the background. So. I know you want to end it anxiously, but just wait a little bit. Only two minutes, only two minutes, okay? The leader is crying. His tears come down. The reason is they, pr- they, they pray, and they were desperate. Is God is listening to our prayer? But God connected us. When we visited there, they understand God is listening. They're planning to build up the church because they're getting right now 20 people in that small house. They're planning to build. We need more church. And their vision is to invite the Lao Bru tribes to worship together. They have a vision to worship together. And we happen to be there to the end of the earth and say, we'll help you. We'll work with you. And New Life in Christ Church are hopping in together working together and to build the church. Let those church can carry out to the end of the earth the message. So this crying is, he just can, it's overjoy. The tear is joyful joy and graceful heart, what he received. So through that appointed ones, what we're seeing in the video, you'll see next time how the word spread to the end of the earth. May show it.
As they sing, nobody cares them, but God cares them. Jesus loves them. And you saw the end of the land, but the end of the earth will expand through the appointed person. Let us pray together. Dear Father, thank you so much this hour that we, we were all appointed one by you, Lord. We're carrying your message to the end of the earth. Where there's a living soul, we don't know who is the appointed one, but Lord, we'll do to carry the message faithfully and bless this church and each one of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.